What is up, everybody, and welcome back to TarHeelIllustrated.com. I'm Jacob Turner, and joining me from Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C., it's our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And AJ, you're back on Press Row. Got to ask you, as we always do when we cover the AC tournament, so it feels like the Wi-Fi vibes have been a lot better today. Feel, feels like the Wi-Fi is working a little bit better today. Can you, did can you, you comment did on you that? Did you see my tweet? Did you see my tweet? I didn't. What'd you tweet? I didn't see it. It's a picture of Twitter trying to load. <laughs> it's black with a little X. I, I said ACC Wi-Fi, baby. He should have tagged a minute. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> you know, I tweet out at the at the TV timeouts. I always uh, grind a bunch of stats and I tweet them out. And there yeah, were a couple yeah. times I didn't do that because Wi-Fi just wasn't happening. I mean, I'd be lying if I said it I was surprised. It unfortunately, AJ. It is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. We're getting through, and again, I think it, post game was a lot smoother today. I think everything uploaded a lot faster. So I had to give we had to give a little bit of credit to the Wi-Fi, I guess. Besides what you're well, telling me, because now I know that I just go outside in the sure. rain and upload on my phone. You have to go outside of the arena. So yeah, <laughs> yeah fact, that's awesome. I'm standing out. I go outside to load <clears throat> the video that the player interviews from the locker room on my phone, mm -hmm. and I'm standing right outside. And the security guy's sitting there watching me the whole time. Then when I came back in, he made me go through the, the scan. Oh, no way. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, I was just standing right here. Dude, like, you've seen me. Here. Been standing here right in front of you for five minutes. That's great. That's great, man. You and then, my, and then it way. went off. And then it went off because I was wearing my press pass. <laughs> almost, they almost probably didn't let you back in, AJ. You're close to getting kicked out. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Do that or fisticuffs in the press room because someone's yeah. trying to steal my workspace. Yeah, you've had you've had quite the quite the eventful uh, post game so far. I mean, I mean, it's not really, but you know, just a couple. It's it's nothing. Never a dull moment at the ACC tournament. That's all. That's all I'll say about it. And it wasn't a dull moment tonight, man. There was that no. was a, that was a really good basketball game. It was it was a heck of a segue again as we're here to talk about Carolina's six seventy two sixty five win over Pittsburgh in the ACC tournament semifinals on Friday night carolina obviously advancing to play the winner of uva and state uh tomorrow night at 8 30 p.m any idea what the score is of that game right now aj do you have any clue? it's halftime that's all that's all i know is it's halftime i'll look I mean, it up in a second it, 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 it was cares. it was the last i saw like a minute and a half left in the first half and i think it was tied okay close game so we like to see yeah. interesting to see how that one plays out uh especially either way tomorrow, but, either way it'll be a good scene either your state carolina oh, yeah. of course that'll be a cool state playing a fifth straight day or if it's uva there'll be a really good atmosphere because all yeah, the UVA yeah. fans are yeah it's a it should be a good the scalpers the scalpers want it to be uva carolina because there'd be more demand i think for tickets yeah. it's probably a good point like you said though regardless gonna be a really intriguing matchup tomorrow night in washington dc but let me run through the stats real quick then we'll dive into it rj davis i mean absolutely fantastic Again, today, 25 points for the ACC Player of the Year. Armando Baycott, another guy who was absolutely fantastic. Tonight, 19 points, 11 boards. I know we're going to talk about him a little bit later. Carolina, through RJ and Armando, 44 of Carolina's 72 points came through those two guys. So just illustrates how good they were. Jalen Washington pitched in six. Uh, Harrison Ingram finished with six points and six boards. Elliot Cadeau had six points, and uh, Seth Trouble finished with five point so pretty even score i know i know rj and armando were the head guys we did have some other guys contributing particularly off the the bench this uh this evening but let's dive into defending i mean aj i think that's where it started for north carolina and thought they were really really good defensively at times and i know carrington in particular had a carlton character that had a big first half 16 points in the first half only eight in the second half so unc definitely did a, a better job with him and then henson and leggett too aj combined for just 11 points uh, in particular blake henson i mean first team all acc guy he just looked all out of sorts tonight and again i think you have to give some credit to carolina defensively for the job they did on the Panthers, but AJ, you're in the arena, so I'd like to get your opinion on it. What did you think about Carolina defensively tonight? Am I wrong in saying they were pretty darn good? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, that's what the, that's pretty much what we were talking to the players about in the locker room afterward. In fact, Carrington Carrington's a really nice player. He's going to yeah, play he in does. the NBA. He's he can he he does things that look effortlessly. Mm -hmm. That look effortless. Excuse me. And he's got really good elevation on his jumper. He's a long guy, uses his length well. He's very, very difficult to deal with. And Seth was on him in the second half. And I asked Seth, you know, that kind of has to get open. What, what's more challenging, keeping him from getting the ball or once he gets the ball? And it may seem like a silly question in some ways, but he's so good at getting open. And he said, you know, when he gets the ball, but both are very challenging. Mm -hmm. And he's a guy that knows how to create. He can get his own stuff and 
it, it doesn't look like he's stressed, but you can see the defenders are always highly stressed when they're on him, except for a guy like Trimble because he is fantastic defensively and was at his best tonight. And that was the key because even if Carrington continued to score, I don't think Carrington was going to beat Carolina by himself. They needed the other guys to step up. I thought Lowe played really well. They got a little lift there for a while from Diaz Graham, but uh, he and Federico got in foul trouble. Armando drew a ton of fouls tonight. And you could see where as much as Federico and Diaz Graham are a nice combination, they're no match for Armando, especially when Armando is playing with the kind of focus he was tonight. And and, and Carolina was able to, to go to him and kind of wear those guys down. So it was about stopping the pick guys. What did we say last night when we didn't know yet who they were going to play? And we did the video. And I said, look, if they play Pitt, they got to defend because Pitt's got yes. a lot of dudes who can put points on the board. Hmm. They got a lot of dudes that are going to earn money playing basketball, either this country or overseas. And um, Carolina did. Henson, Henson and Leggett didn't score the first 30 minutes of the game. Leggett hmm. put, put 30 on Wake Forest yesterday, or 30. Yeah, no. 30. Henson first team on ACC and Carolina's played them twice now and they've shut down Henson both times. They shut him down up at Pittsburgh. He, he was four for 15 from the floor in that game. That was that stretch defensively where Carolina then shut down PJ Hall the next game and then shut down DJ Horn the next game. So they were playing really well defensively and I, they kind of continued that here. The fact that Henson and Leggett each only attempted three shots in the first half was an enormous uh, statistic and it showed you how well Carolina was playing even though they trailed they were doing a lot of things that give them traction to win games they, they, they were they were winning the battle on the boards they were getting in transition enough that you knew that it was there and the key was can they continue to get stops and that's what it was about because they won a game when Cormac was off they won a game when Harrison was off Elliott did not play well tonight yeah, but they defended, and they have two two guys who been around here, man. They've been around, and they played like they've been around. So defensively, this was a fantastic performance. And give uh, give Harrison Ingram credit too. He was on Henson a lot, and Cormac was on him a couple times. They were switching a lot, but Harrison was on him a lot and did a fantastic job. Yeah, no, it was a really good defensive performance from from North Carolina. And just to run through a couple more stats, you mentioned the glass right there, 44 to 35 advantage for the Tar Heels on the glass, 34 to 20 advantage points in the paint wise for the Tar Heels as well. And, and despite a, you know, a relatively poor shooting night from Carolina outside. And I think that illustrates again, how um, great RJ Davis and Armando Baycott in particular were tonight. That's what we're going to talk about next AJ. I mean, I think in our notes before three things we have written down that RJ and Armando were pros tonight. And I think that's a, a great way to describe it. I put a tweet out and I think it was the middle of second half when, you know, Armando and RJ in particular started to kind of take over the game officially. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, Armando Baycott and RJ Davis making plays in March. I was like, I feel like we've feel like we seen this before, AJ. It was a little bit yeah. of deja vu. It was yeah. the older guys, the experienced guys, the guys who have worn the North Carolina uh, jersey for as long as they have, longer than anybody else on the team. They're the guys who stepped up in a big postseason yeah. game. I don't think anybody should necessarily be surprised about that, but that for me is just a, absolutely a great sign heading into the rest of the postseason. It was absolutely crucial tonight because, like I said, he was only 6 for 22 from three-point land. Cormac Ryan, really quiet. Like you said, Harrison Ingram offensively, really quiet. Elliot Cano, not the greatest game for him. This game was calling for somebody to take over, and it ultimately ended up being – two guys with Armando, like I said, combining for 44 of, uh, of Carolina's 72 points. They're absolutely fantastic tonight. So you got to see it in person. Was it as good as it looked in person as it did on TV, man? Well, I I was courtside. Yeah, you had a good seat. I game, saw that. The six, I saw that. For the six-game run two years ago, I was courtside. And mm -hmm. the thing that reminded what Armando reminded me of tonight and yesterday too, but certainly tonight, was he he – he had the, the kind of bounce and was getting the kind of looks that he got during that run. Mm -hmm. But he's better now. He's much better defensively. There were a couple of times on switches, he altered shots. He, he altered a three-pointer by low, I think it was. Made him kind of shoot with a little bit more arc like he did Nigel Pack down at Coral Gables a month and a half ago. Uh, he's doing things like that now that he didn't do two years ago. He's a much better player than he was two years ago. He's a much more well-rounded player. He had some assists today. That he's finding people on the kickouts. But 
I asked Cormac in the locker room, I said, a few times this year, you have referred to RJ and Armando as pros. Mm -hmm. That last 10, 12 minutes, was that maybe a higher level of professionalism from them that you, you know, as professional you can get in college, right? Mm -hmm. Professional play from them that you've seen? And he said, yeah, they just, they just took it up. Jalen Washington said that Armando has been so dialed. He's been dialed in all year. He's always focused. I hate when people say he takes plays off. He doesn't just gets beat sometimes. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. But the level of, of focus and how even more dialed in that the team is and it, it really comes from those two right now. They're on a mission and that mission is, is, propped up by their focus and by how dialed in they are. And then they're back in and up with the play. RJ was the ACC player of the year tonight. You saw it. You saw everything in his back. You saw all the reasons why he was ACC player of the year and ran away with it. You, you saw Armando doing the kind of things he's done a lot in his career and eventually will have his jersey up there as the all-time leading rebounder because they will tweak that and add that and Ed Coda will get in too by the way so let's make the, the Armando dissenters happy because they probably like Coda <laughs> but, <laughs> that's true but it, it, so I asked Jalen Washington I said from your vantage point being a teammate and you're right there on the bench and you're looking out there I said did it look to you like the last 10 minutes of the game that it was Armando and RJ's game it was their game like they owned the game and everyone else was there mm -hmm. it was those two on the court and there were eight other people on the floor it was just their game you, I didn't I thought for a while that Carolina could lose I thought they could lose going in I kept telling mm -hmm. people look Pitt can beat them Pitt's, Pitt is so man. much better Pitt's so mm -hmm. much better than reputation I told you guys back in in January when I saw them in person up there that's an NCAA team and if they don't get into the tournament then it's a disgrace and they need to mm -hmm. completely junk the system and start over because they are absolutely an NCAA tournament team and it required Carolina to play really well in spots and have their two veteran guys the guys that have been there before to step up and lead the way tonight and they did they were together about as good as they've been all year especially given the moment especially given the tension especially given the fact that Pitt wouldn't go away. There were a few times where I thought, you know, Carolina might make a little push here and get this thing to 10 or 12, maybe even 14. Pitt wouldn't let it happen. So kudos to Pitt. And Capel has really gotten his program going in there, and I think they mirror his personality a lot now, which is why I really enjoy watching them. And they pushed Carolina, man. They made the two studs at Carolina. They made them play high level of stud today in this game, and, and they did it. And that's why Carolina's a national champion, because mm -hmm. they they always find ways, this team does, because they have so many answers. They've checked so many boxes. And by the way, the bench had a nice little stretch there too. And yeah. it kind of got them to the point where RJ and Armando took over. So uh, it's a really, really good basketball team. There's a professional element to this team, and it begins with the two of them. They were pros tonight, no other way around yeah. it. By the way, Armando had 11, 11 boards and at least three assists. I don't know what he finished with, but yeah, he had uh, yeah eleven boards, three assists. Yep, nineteen points. Yeah, so and, really, and he really battled. Good. He battled. He communicated. He kept some balls alive that he didn't get credit for rebounds. And like I said, he drew four fouls each on Federico and on Diaz Graham. And mm -hmm. he's hitting free throws. He's he's become an excellent free throw shooter. His game is so much more polished than it was even two years ago. And you saw that tonight. You saw what Armando is tonight, I think. He was fantastic. I know we talked about it a little bit. He's fantastic defensively, too. I mean, he just was. He was everywhere. He was so good. Yeah. He, there's a reason he made the all defensive team because coaches mm -hmm. have a vote on that. They all know. Every yeah. coach voted for him. Mm -hmm. They know. And his greatest tremble is, you know, Armando does things with the height and the girth as well. He's mm -hmm. quick. And he reacts well. The fact that he can now defend guards on switches when they're driving is such an enormous element to what this team does. Because mm -hmm. not a lot of bigs that can do that. And he's smart. He scouts teams well. He's, he told us the other day at the team hotel that he's doing a much better job of scouting opponents. And he scouts them more. He watches more film. And he says he feels like he knows the league better, knows mm -hmm. the opponents better, just because he's just that much more dialed in. The extra year has helped him. It's of helped course. him a lot. And, you know, when the NCAA approves a fifth year, a lot more guys are going to be helped by it, too, in the manner that Armando has been. And it's been a joy to watch a guy just turn up all the intangibles up to another level. You know, mm -hmm. the scoring and rebounding has been there, but it's the intangibles that have made him an even better player this year. And we saw all of that tonight.
Yeah, no, I completely agree. I'm glad you said something about Pitt too. Really good basketball team. But for me, this for me, this 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 game tonight, AJ, was the most intriguing matchup of the whole week. I mean, th- that's my I mean, would you agree with that? I mean, I think whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the championship game will be great. I mean, if it's Carolina State or in Virginia, but this was the matchup I was most intrigued about because Pitt came in as a very hot team. Yeah, but whoever they played them all night, it's, it's going to be a, t- a tough task because State, of course, of course, on of course. fire if they win. And look, Virginia got punked at home by Carolina a few weeks ago. That's and they're playing for a championship. They're playing for respect too. Mm-hmm. It's not often that Virginia has a chip on its shoulder. Mm-hmm. They got one right now. Yeah. So does Carolina. And what's pretty cool is Harrison Ingram admitted tonight that he just finds that he finds a chip. He has to have a chip. <laughs> He could have the he could be having the greatest day ever, and all of a sudden he got to take the court and he used to find a chip somewhere. So he kind of does what MJ used to do: He'll look at something in the stands or someone will piss him off, or, or <laughs> Hubert will look at him a certain kind of way and he'll piss him off, and he'll stay that's pissed great. off the whole game. That's great. So, but that's, that's but that's bad. championship. Te- look, we've said it a thousand times before: championship teams have to have screw you guys. Mm-hmm. Guys just say screw you and they play with a chip and an edge. And Carolina's got two of them in Ingram and Ryan who are like that every second they're on the floor. And RJ and Armando have that, but they have a much wholer games, fuller games to go along with it. So the chips that those guys have, the edge that they have complements what Armando and RJ do. And when Elliott plays well, then becomes a breathtaking team. They yeah. weren't breathtaking night, but they were damn good. Yeah, no, they got a, a, a lot of good balance on this team, especially in that starting five with experience and, again, guys who played in big games for North Carolina in the NCAA tournament, made runs, and also guys who have played a lot of basketball elsewhere and have come in and been very, very good for North Carolina this year. So, yeah, it's an extremely, extremely healthy mix of, of players right now for North Carolina. But last thing, AJ, we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, I think we've already kind of hit on it a little bit, but, we, you know, we always like to talk about what this means. Championship game tomorrow, UVA or NC State. I'm I'm rooting for an NC State matchup. A because I think that would be absolutely fantastic. But AJ, I don't want to watch UVA play against. No, no disrespect to Tony Benn, he's done a great job over there. But I would much rather watch Carolina versus NC State. That's just kind of what I'm look if Virginia's playing well. It's, yeah, it's great, true, but it's a great style. That 2018-2019 teams were fun to watch. So uh, yeah. I'm not gonna. It's not like he just holds the ball and then they. Hey, if they're playing well doesn't matter what their style is they're playing yeah. well i i, I kind of like the the challenge that they would present carolina mm-hmm. they're a better team than nc state they're better defensively i think it would be a tougher game for north carolina to beat virginia especially here than it would be to beat nc state playing on its fifth day so journalistically speaking i like to see the challenges mm-hmm. i think this team needs to have that challenge uh they would be amped up to beat state because they hate state and they openly admit <laughs> that they do but they don't like uva either so and they want to win a championship. You could put the Wizards up there tomorrow and they would want to win a championship. You could put you know, a, a, um, an orphanage, team from an orphanage up there. They're going to want to clobber them and win the title. This team is driven by itself right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the opponents are obstacles. Mm-hmm. They're obstacles in their mission and they're driven by their mission. So whoever it is, they'll be prepared. They just played both here recently and they beat both here recently and both the state played them fairly tough in some ways so they just got to be who they are and, and they'll cut down the nets tomorrow night yeah, yeah there's no doubt I'm, I'm very intrigued to see what happens tomorrow evening but yeah i know you are and right one seed and they're one seed now yeah with, oh, with, officially with, yeah, yeah arizona, 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 yeah. arizona and tennessee losing today carolina's locked for a one seed yeah which i i i think they out west deserve. Yeah, yeah, of, of course. You'll be going out west. Hopefully, hopefully Charlotte next weekend. But you, you well, yeah, it'll be Charlotte next weekend point. for sure. I was yeah. born in Los Angeles, so it's always good. That's true. I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't live there very long, but I was born you're there. You're from the and west. If they go to, and then if they go to Phoenix and if they get to the Final Four, I'm probably not coming back. I'll just drive to Phoenix, man. That's just too <laughs> much travel. <laughs> Before we leave, miles are nice, but not that nice. Yeah, no, they're not that nice. You're 100 right. Before before we head out, I, I want to hit on something you just hit on too. You said this team kind of has that inner desire and motivation to go win a championship. You can just tell as someone who's covered it for long as as you have. Have you sensed that from kind of minute one in the ACC tournament, or have you sensed that from before the ACC tournament even started? I, I know they've talked about it, but there does feel like it does feel like this team is. I don't want to say more locked in. I don't think that's the right word, but it, they, there does seem to be a real purpose in how they're playing this yeah. weekend. They are because the stakes are higher. 
So mm-hmm. as in any human in human nature, the stakes are higher, you're going to be more locked in or you're going to be overwhelmed by the moment. This club's not overwhelmed by it. I started the first time I thought, I realized rather that this team has that kind of mission mindset was the Tennessee game mm-hmm. way back at the end of November. And they just beat the living crap out of Tennessee that night. <laughs> and it wasn't just because they won, but it was how they talked about the win. And that's why I've always said, like I tell young people that come on our staff, our, you know, the, the teams we cover, they dictate what we write and say by how they play and then what they say about it. That's why the interviews after the game are so important. And I, I got the, the jive then that this team was locked in to do something like this, but they had to go through that path, which was windy at times, to get to where they are now. They had to collect all of those experiences to kind of fortify themselves with the good and the bad and, and overcoming things that don't go so well. And they've done that. They've won eight in a row now. Mm-hmm. And when you look at the three losses they've had since Kentucky on December 16, they lost by one point on the road when they when they had the ball at the end and there wasn't a foul called. Otherwise, RJ probably would have won at the line. They had the hangover loss against Clemson after beating Duke, and they nearly pulled that one out which as poorly as they played. And then they lost at Syracuse on a night that a really good program had its best shooting game in half a century. And Carolina was down four with the ball with two minutes left. So it's a really good team. They know how to they know how to climb through ugly stretches and sometimes not not great nights. Like tonight, there were a lot of things to pick at from tonight, but they were able to climb through it and and get to the other side, so to speak. And they've learned how to do that throughout the year. You think of some of the games that they won when they didn't look that great. They didn't look great at BC, but they still won. They didn't look great in Coral Gables, but they still found ways to win. That you you collect that stuff through the course of the year, and that all that all travels with you into the postseason because you have because you know you can do it, and they've done it multiple times. So there's no reason to believe why they won't keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, specifically tonight, it just felt like UNC just wore Pittsburgh down as the game went on. And I thought Pittsburgh was really good in the first half, and Carolina obviously made made a little bit of a run, particularly when um, Federico came out. That kind of changed it for a little bit with those fouls. Um, but again, second half wise, it just felt like Carolina had too much for Pittsburgh. And it again, ultimately resulted in a 72 to 65 win for the Tar Heels. Carolina advanced into 27 and six overall and will play in the championship game. AJ, so you are not leaving DC tomorrow. You got to stay up late tomorrow evening in the nation's capital. So I guess you'll get ready for that. 830 tip off, right? I'm not making that up. Am 830, I? No, 8, 830 tip off. So Prime time. late one. Yeah, it's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna be a late one. And, we, and then the selection Sunday and yep. then guess what? Spring football. We've yeah, got Matt Brown Presser Monday at Monday at ten AM. Oh. The first football practice is Tuesday at eight. And then after I file from football practice, I drive likely to Charlotte because Charlotte's a Thursday, Saturday. Yep. So we would have all the media stuff on Wednesday. So uh, the breaks won't be pumped until Certainly after basketball a little bit, but not really until after the spring game. So we got yeah. another uh, five weeks of yeah. big time grind, but you know, it, it beats having a real job. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. AJ. Well, we'll continue to grind it out over here at Tar Heel Illustrated dot com. Make sure you guys come sign up. Premium subscription links in the description below. Eight thirty three a month you can be a carolina insider too great time to do so aj just talked about it march madness spring football starts on monday somehow i feel like football just ended 15 minutes ago somehow football is starting back up again so you guys want to get started yeah yeah it's just it never ends man it never really ended for you guys because you've been going to press conferences all off season anyway for football so you never it's not like it ever really ended to be completely honest with you but uh not really not here to talk football people do not want to talk about football right now oh god aj we'll go ahead and get out of here i've been jacob turner he's been andrew jones another edition of our three things post game podcast appreciate y'all watching as always make sure you like share subscribe hit the notification bell too we'll see you guys tomorrow night have a good one thanks, thanks.